Grace and peace to you from God our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. We do the Pauline greeting. The Pauline greeting is simply this. Peace be with you. And the response is? Let's stand and greet each other in Christ's name.
Today is All Saints Sunday. We remember and honor those in our lives who've gone before us. The bells on the banner represent departed loved ones of our congregation. Linda Beloda, Gary Bloom, Larry Burroughs, Jared Chastain, Sandra Dean, Betsy Deering, Michelle Dunham, Robert Montgomery, Paul Nicholson, Ardeth Vandercook, and all the loved ones we have lost this year. Will you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks this day. We give you thanks for all those saints who've gone before us, mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, family and friends that we've lost this year, and even those we've lost earlier that we still remember and love, who made an impression in our lives, who blessed the lives of so many, who taught us and exhibited the love of Christ for us. Help us, Lord, to reflect that same love and life in this life that we live, that our light may reflect you, Lord, in a hurting world. Lord, even though they've gone, we remember them and we love them because love is eternal. God, you are love, and we rest on the promise that love goes on forever and that your love for us is perfect. We know ours is not, but we thank you for the gift of love and how we relate to others in a meaningful and precious way. Lord, we pray for those in our church family who are struggling this day, those who can't be with us due to illness, due to surgeries, due to challenges that we don't even understand. And we lift them to you, Lord, and pray for your healing touch on each one. Lord, we lift those, heart, those prayers in our heart that maybe we've not shared with anyone, prayers that seem too important or too trivial. And we know, Lord, that you care about each part of our lives, that you know the numbers of hairs on our head, so you care and want to hear. So we share those prayers with you this morning. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. May our lives truly be a reflection of his love, the hands and feet in a hurting world. And just as these saints who've gone before us modeled your love, may we be worthy to represent you in a world that is in such desperate need of unity, of compassion, and of care. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name as we share together the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Please stand for the reading of the Holy Scripture. Today's reading comes from the second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. If you have your Bible or want to read along um, on your phone, we invite you to do so. Uh, The second letter of Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 and 11 through 12. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of everyone of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. In there. What does that mean? That's an odd title for a sermon, don't you think? Stay in there. Why did I know we'd have tons of names on these? And I'll tell you why, church. Because you're disciples, you're not consumers. We're not here to build disciples, we're here to build Disciples who serve, not disciples who consume. There's a difference. Participation in this church, membership vows in this church family, I don't care what the United Methodist Church does in general, and you know that I don't, has connotation of being a verb. In other words, take the vows, show up at worship. When called upon, be willing to serve in action, wherever and however you can. My wife and I were laughing the other day. She said, how actively involved could we be at a church with our jobs if we weren't working at that church? She said, in other words, if we did church for a living during the week, and we were members of another church, do you realize we could hardly ever show up? That's an absolute truth. You all are working more hours than you've ever worked in jobs that demand more of one human being than they've ever demanded. Marriage is hard nowadays. We have social media that portrays it as something that's the end-all, be-all answer to the easy way of life. I have a term for that, but I won't utter it in the sanctuary, and you know me well. Life is tough. Will you say amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in spite of the nature of the presenter, we pray that your will is done in the words that are spoken this day. And we ask these things in the name of the risen Christ Jesus. And all of God's church said... I'll talk to you about 2 Thessalonians. There's some portions of this chapter that are very similar, well, almost identically stated. Hope is left out, but steadfastness is there. Faith, love, steadfast, being steadfast or stressed in the second letter of Paul's churches in Thessalonica. The reason that's important is he wants to focus specifically on these three things. They already have the hope. They're pulling together, but he says, stay in there. I know it's tough. Stay in there. Every phase in your life has been a disappointment in what you thought the expectation of what it was supposed to be, societally or in your mind, has come true. 
Will you say amen? Let's be real with one another. If I could just get this, I'll feel this way about everything. If I could just accomplish this, I'll feel this way about everything. If I could only get my own command in the military, or I could only run people like I've been run someday, someday. And then God grants us that someday, and we go, eh, this is not what I thought it would be. I say that because the churches at Thessalonica are under the same struggle. Paul's sending this second letter. He wants to encourage Timothy. He wants to encourage Silas. He wants to encourage the others of two things. One, that we're not the ones in charge, yet we are responsible. That is to say, God is sovereign, and God has us, but we are responsible I like how people tell me all the time, and it's not you, but this is why I don't like telling people I'm a pastor when I go out, because they're weird. (laughs) And in my case, when they find out your wife is a pastor, they ask you the weirdest questions you would never ask another married couple. Do you have a normal marriage? Boy, I could have fun with that one. One lady asked us one time if we used Scripture against each other when we argued. (laughs) Yep, I walk in the house and I'm reading 1 Corinthians every day. I'm like, oh, hey, everyone. Come on, kids, pull your Bibles out. We're going to read them all day long. Don't turn on that evil square box. We all have predications we would like to have come true. We all have those things we would like to be the reality, but life is life. Will you say amen? Marriage is hard. That's why when I stand up here to a couple that's paying no attention to me whatsoever, because they're just so excited, it's going to be so easy. Ah. Uh, But then later you have that easy thing called children or a nephew or a niece that comes to stay with you. And it's a challenge no matter what. This Hollywood nature of looking at what's supposed to be is the most unhealthy thing we can possibly take on. Marriage can be a wonderful blessing. Marriage is like church members. You can meet the worst people you've ever met in your life in a church. You can meet the best people you've ever met in your life in a church. You can meet the strangest people you've ever met in your life in a church. Will you say amen? And see, if you didn't say amen right now, you're the strange one. (laughs) I've never met anyone strange. Oh, yeah, you have. Paul's trying to say, hey... I know this is not what you thought it was. You were commissioned to plant churches and you were excited and then you started getting beat on, both verbally and even physically. Keep encouraging each other. You've got got a healthy environment around each other regardless of what the world is telling you, regardless of what is beaming in, keep knocking it back out and stay in there. Marriage is a sovereign covenant. I believe to be a sacrament. And we're so legalistic, we took one word in our book of discipline and changed it from the Catholic Church because God forbid we sound like anybody else. If Christ is the center of an act you commit to one another, just like communion we're about to receive, this table belongs to Jesus Christ, not Methodism. Isn't it a sacrament? Oh yeah, but... We've got to have 48 lawyers with anything Methodism does. So what they did was they turned it into a sign act. They added the word act in the book of discipline. It is a sacrament. And if you don't like it and you're watching me, you want to do an audit, come on. Christ is the center of that. When you take communion... We pray, make these be for us the body broken and the blood shed of Christ our Savior. 
In other words, Jesus is saying again and again to you, stay in there. I know this is not what you thought it would be. I know this is not the future you planned. I know there's good. I know there's bad. And then the ultimate enemy, the mundane. And I want you to know God loves you. He's sovereign. But you, ladies and gentlemen, are responsible for the growth of the kingdom. Why is that so important on All Saints Day? Gary Blum. And I have to hold my emotions back. Gary Blum was a Jew. He was here every Sunday. And he would go, you know, a lot of the New Testament has a lot of Old Testament ties, so I can hang with what you're saying. Gary even helped produce our Seder meal that we had. I said, so is this pretty close? He goes, close enough for Gentiles. Good job. <laughs> We're going to do the Seder meal again this year. We didn't do it last year out of respect for what was going on in Israel, but we are going to do it from now on. It's important. It's our heritage. I heard somebody, my daughter had a little girl that was Jewish, for example, over for Halloween. What my family does is when I'm peopled out, they like to have parties. When I don't want to see another human being, just know that 38 people of which I don't know are coming to my house. And then I always make the mistake. She goes, this is so-and-so. And I go, hey, great to meet you. And my daughter always goes, you've met her like six times. Sorry. The world is not a perfect place, amen? Amen. These are not perfect churches where perfect people are. I don't want to be in a perfect church. I wouldn't be allowed in there. I don't want a perfect pastor. But Paul says, I know you're having doubts at times. I need you to stay in there. Because you're here because those that have gone before you have stayed in there. I love the fact that a sanctuary that was built... When no one is left living in this congregation, when that foundation was poured and they were members here, is hosting youth, children, and adults on Wednesday nights for a meal. You're literally eating, coming together on the foundations of what was laid before you with the saints. You ever considered that? The people that argued... I was in a fellowship hall one time and I was about to have to go into a $12 million building program. People sure do love you when you're the pastor and you're about to do that, by the way. Shouldn't that be fun? No, it's not fun. You hear things like, you know, we used to know everybody here. Thanks a lot. And so for All Saints Sunday... What I'm going to ask you to consider is this. How are you going to be one of those folks that have gone before us? How are you going to contribute to the foundations of Christendom? How can you? For some of us, it's how will we? I ended up doing Gary Blum's funeral. There may be something wrong with me. Because I have prayed at a rabbi's wedding and now done the homily for a Jewish man who was part of my congregation's funeral service. But as the rain came down and the grave started caving in, and Trudy and Kim Watson were standing in the mud in flats. Why do you wear flats to a funeral, ladies? I'm just saying, we know it's going to be all terrain. And they're in about three inches of mud, and I mean mud. I had to put the truck in four-wheel drive and speed backing up the hill to get to where the grave was. And one of the things I got to say was, as the rain came down and the awning began to collapse, and the grave starts to start, if you're within three feet of the grave, the ground starts moving with you. I got to begin with these words, Gary 
would have loved this. A bunch of people dressed up in a thunderstorm, the majority of them Christians, to pay tribute, ironically, as a brother, someone who followed the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Folks, I want to tell you, I know life's thrown you curveballs. The hardest thing that I know is when we do All Saints Sunday, I know what the problems were and the challenges of those people that went on to God. And part of me grieves that they're gone, but the other part of me says, praise God. Those struggles are behind you. Those worries, the sickness, the anxiety, all the things that troubled you are gone. And you're in the kingdom of heaven. If you get anything out of All Saints Sunday, here's what I want you to remember. Paul's writing a letter and he's telling all of us, stay in there. I know it's tough, but don't give up. Stay in there. I know life can become incredibly mundane. Stay in there. There are times when you're not at the top of the mountain in your faith. Stay in there. There are times when you're just walking into the edifice as the church going, how did I even get here? Life is tough. Stay in there. Because God is sovereign and he's got you. But you and I are responsible for the growth of the kingdom. Church of Jesus Christ at Alito, stay in there. You can do it. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all of God's church said. With those aiding in communion, please come forward. I said this earlier, but I want to remind you, if you're a guest with us today, we don't do visitors. You're part of this congregation the minute you walk in. And we want you to know if you're of another tradition and if we came to your church, you would not allow us communion. We don't believe in that because we believe this table belongs to Jesus Christ. And in so, all are invited who believe in Christ as their Savior. So please feel free as the ushers direct in a few minutes to come forward. We would celebrate Christ with you. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, the first thing he did was he said a prayer of confession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the nature of all that is holy, we confess our sin before receiving. We pray that these be made for us, the body broken and the blood shed of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And they enable us to serve you in newness of life and evermore dwell in Christ and he in us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all of God's church said. Jesus shared a meal and on that night he was betrayed. He took bread, presented it, gave thanks over it, broke it. And said, this is my body broken for you, take and eat. And as often as you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and again giving thanks over it, he blessed it. And he presented it to the disciples and said, this is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. And as often as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're not worthy so as to gather up the crumbs under your table. And yet you always have mercy on us. You always love us. You always forgive us. Lord, as we have received, we also receive the message that this meal provides for us. And that is to stay in there. Keep moving. Move forward as we grow your kingdom. We pray that these elements help us to serve you in newness of life as we pray that Christ evermore dwells in us and us in him. 
We ask these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all of God's church said, We give the invitation every Sunday. It is from Jesus Christ. It is not from us. The invitation is if you'd like to accept Christ as your Savior, if you'd like to be baptized, or you'd like to join with this congregation, you won't find a better group of people who are sinners just trying to get it. And we would join with you in that. So if you visited today, I want to go on record This is only the first time I have dropped Jesus. (laughs) But I'm not going to say it will be the last time. So church, let's stand and let's praise God. Let's sing like John Wesley did. It doesn't have to be on key. Just sing loudly. Church, I want to remind you of this. No matter where you falter, no matter where you fail, this next week, because none of us are sinless, will you say amen? You began your narrative, your story of this next week on church by staying in there. You came to worship. Nothing can remove that from your story. You dedicated the next week to Jesus Christ, your Savior, no matter what. I want you to remember that. Now let's receive the benediction. Heavenly Father, as we go out into the world, help us to encourage others as we know you will encourage us in the midst of hardships, in the midst of life in general. May we feel your presence through the power of the Holy Spirit. Encourage us. Help us to encourage others as we've been encouraged by the Scripture. 
Remember those who have gone before us that set the foundations of where we are today. Lord, help us to stay in there. We thank you for this story of victory that is our history. Help us to be those who honor it. We ask these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all of God's church said together, have a blessed week, church.